Welcome to our lecture online. We're now starting one of the most important portions of the consideration of a three-phase circuit, namely the power in a three-phase circuit. So let's take a look at it. Let's say we have a Y configuration load and we have three currents entering that load. We have the neutral in between, we have IA, IB, and IC, the three line currents that are feeding the three impedances, the three balanced impedances in the load portion of the circuit. We're now going to consider the voltage and the current in the time domain. In other words, we're now going to consider the, volt, the varying voltage, the time varying voltage, and the time varying cur current in the three-phase circuit. So we're going to write the three voltages, VAN, VBN, and VCN, which is the voltage from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. The voltages across the three impedances we're going to define it as the square root of 2 times the phase voltage times the cosine of omega t. Now, why the square root of 2? Well, it turns out that the phase voltage is the RMS voltage. So since we're now going to show the time-varying voltage, we need to have the peak voltage here. So we have to multiply the RMS voltage by the square root of 2 to get the peak voltage times the time-varying portion, the cosine of omega t. We then realize that the other two voltages will differ in phase by 120 degrees. So VBN will be the same but with a phase angle of minus 120 degrees. And VCN will be the same but with a phase angle of plus 120 degrees. Now we know there's going to be a phase difference between the current and the voltage. So let's say that we have mm, maybe an inductive load. So there's going to be a... The, the voltage is going to leave the current, or I, the current, will lag the voltage by some phase angle, let's call it phi. And so therefore we can now identify IA, IB, and IC in terms of the phase current, and again we need to square the 2 because the phase current is the RMS current, times the cosine of omega t minus the phase angle between the current and the voltage. The current will lag the voltage if we have an a, um, inductive load. So IB and IC will then be different by 120 degrees. So it'll be cosine of omega t minus phi minus 120 and omega t minus phi plus 120 for the other two currents. So now how do we express the total power in the load? Well, the power, the total power will be the sum of the power of A, the power of B, the power of C, the power of the three impedances added together. Notice that will simply be the current times the voltage of each of the three legs of the, uh, of the circuit. And now we need to define what those are. Now, all we need to do is multiply VAN by IA, VBN by IB, and VCN with IC. And we do that over here. We can see that the power then will be the current times the voltage. So notice that when we multiply the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, we get 2. We get the phase voltage multiplied times the, the phase current. And then we have the cosine of omega t from the voltage times the cosine of omega t minus phi of the current. That would be the first impedance. Now the second impedance, we multiply the cosine of omega t minus 120 times cosine of omega t minus phi minus 120. So this is the, the current, this is the cosine portion of the voltage, the cosine portion of the current. And then we do it one more time for the third one. So again, we have two times the phase voltage times the current, uh, times the phase current, times the cosine of omega t plus 120, cosine of omega t minus phi plus 120. So we're simply multiplying the voltages and the current on each of the three impedances in the load. Then we need to use the trigonometric identity. We realize that the product of the cosine A times the cosine of B is one half cosine of A plus B plus the cosine of A minus B. So we're going to do the same thing here. Notice we can factor out a 2 VP IP or V phase I phase twice the, the phase voltage and the current voltage is factored out. And then since when we multiply the cosines we end up with a one half factor three times we can also factor out a one half. Notice the two will cancel out to one half. We're then left with the cosine of 2 omega t minus V which is the sum of the, oh, well, let, I lost myself for a moment here. So when we add the two 
angles, we have omega t plus omega t minus phi, that's twice omega t minus phi when they add, and when we subtract, omega t's will cancel out, subtracting a minus phi will give us a plus phi. So this is a plus b and a minus b. We do it again for the second multiplication here, so we have, first we add the two together, so it's twice omega t, minus phi, minus 240 degrees. Where are we here? Right there. And then we subtract, so the omega t's cancel, the 120 degrees cancel, and minus times the minus gives us a plus phi. So that would be a plus b, a minus b, a plus b, a minus b. Finally, we do it a third time. We add them together, so we have two omega t's, 240 degrees, and a minus phi. When we subtract, the omega t's cancel, the 120 degrees cancel, and all we have left is a positive phi. Now, when we add these three together, and let me, let me get some color here. So, if we add the cosine of 2 omega t minus phi, the cosine of 2 omega t minus phi minus 240 degrees, and the cosine of 2 omega t minus phi plus 240 degrees, in essence, we end up with three phase components, which are exactly 120 degrees apart from one another. And so when they have the equal magnitude and we add them all together, the sum equals zero, which means the sum of this plus the sum of this plus the sum of this cancels out and we're left with three cosine of phi's. Therefore, we have the two cancel out to one half. We have the phase voltage, the phase current times three times the cosine of phi. Phi again is the phase difference between the current and the voltage in our load. Of course, there's always going to be a phase difference. For example, what we can see here, that we have the impedance Z. Of course, we have the phase difference here. That's always going to be there when we have either an inductive or a capacitive load. With an inductive load, we have the voltage leading the current. And so with the, the current lag of phi, we end up with the power being equal to the phase voltage times the, cos the current, take that back, the power on the total load will be the phase voltage times the, the phase current times three times the cosine of the phase difference between the current and the voltage. So we can write it as three times the product of the phase voltage times the current voltage times the cosine of phi. In other words, the power on the load on the three phase circuit is constant. Since phi is a constant, this is a constant and this is a constant, everything is constant on the right side of the equation the power of a three-phase circuit is always constant, doesn't change. Of course, you need a balanced load, but it is constant. That is amazing because normally the power will fluctuate sinusoidally just like the voltage of the current in a single-phase circuit. In a three-phase circuit, with a difference of 120 degrees between the phases, all three phases, the power is constant. And that is the beauty, that is the key, one of the main advantages to using three-phase circuit by having a constant power uh, to the load of the circuit. Secondly, we realize that this is the maximum power you can have, and the cosine of phi will then, of course, drop the maximum power. The larger the angle phi, the lar larger the phase difference, the greater the power loss, the power not lost per se, but the power to the source. So if you want to maximize the power to the source, you want to minimize the phase difference. And sometimes you can arrange that by putting in some capacitors to reduce the phase angle. So we also have to rec recognize that the maximum power to the, to the load is going to occur when the phase angle approaches zero, which of course would be one of your attempts. You want to make sure that phase angle stays small. So two main advantages, you can control the phase angle, you can maximize the power to the load, and you realize that the power to the load is going to be a constant quantity, making for a very good power distribution to the load, and you don't have to worry about that variation in, in the power to the load. And this is how we realize that the power is constant in a three-phase circuit.